Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast of three brothers trying to figure it all out. With your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, Redacted Gilgamesh. Ahoy! Ahoy! I'm here! Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, sometimes it takes longer to volley the ball than you thought. Right. <laughs> oh man, it was... um. It was intense. I think it was yep. nail biting action. <clears throat> it was nail biting action, uh, and it was a it was a hard it was a hard hard slog uh, for sure. Um, I mean, one it's probably one of the later latest uh, uh, games that we've played. So all the girls are you know a little more tired, a uh, little not That's as true. much gas in the tank, and we were we were playing a team with thirteen members on it uh how how many members does your team have i'm guessing not 13 seven oof, oof. seven oy, oy, oy. <laughs> so we gotta you know our girls were working a lot harder to make that you know work while they're basically swapping out two every time you know um oh. so that was that was tough for sure um so of course with uh also with at so with literally do well, not literally but like basically double the players you get a lot more you know home field turnout uh in the stands there so oh, yeah true they're a bit more, bit more raucous uh than our 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 crew that was there um so that's impactful as well uh but no that was uh it was a it was a hard game I I complimented uh, Miss Lil on her uh, her returns that got the got the scores for that uh, for that particular set. So um, that was was good. Trying to trying to remind the team it's not it's not all about the serving, right? Yeah, you can score on serves, but the returns yeah, there's other yeah there's are the, other, yeah other other avenues. They're, they're, they are is equally as important because the ball will be coming to you soon, right? So <laughs> yeah, and you know sometimes the team isn't expecting the ball to come back to them. Yeah, especially the younger ages, right? Then it's like a big surprise, like oh, 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 what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> yes yes so that is definitely a thing of like well the ball is over the net my job is done wait what's this why is it returning uh <laughs> yeah oh oh no uh, what? no <laughs> it wasn't supposed to do that um so so that's that was that was fun oh i also i also got to be a line judge i was a line judge oh tonight. my goodness so, so that was one uh one of the co- coaches came over and was like uh hey uh does any, any one of the parents want to be a line judge it was like radio silence and i was like me so i held up my hand <laughs> and um and I I said, congratulations in. that's basically what you need to do to be a line judge you yeah pretty much hand <laughs> holdy everything yeah, right? oh, hand downy yeah. thing right that's yeah. the thing like oh i was equally smart. so that's what the, the signal which yeah, signal I, is the correct one right right like, so, i don't remember uh well so hands up is uh is is out hands down and forward is in so ah yeah uh, yes how how could I have forgotten exactly um uh, so I was talking to the ref and whoopsie. she she was hilarious because um I, I was standing there and she goes oh are you our line judge and I said if that's what you I, I said is that what you need and she said yes and I said great what do I do? And she laughed and she said, okay, well, if the ball hits the line or is in, you do the little anything. No, if it's the it's line it, line or out, it's it's out, right? So they play if the ball, t- if it touches the line, it's out. Um, yes. I think, right? So anyway. Uh, so, uh, sure. Anyway. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, this is why I'm not a line judge. But anyway, and she like, she, <laughs> went, she made the, she made the hand gestures of like taking your hands and like throwing them straight out in front of you down. Like you're doing a, like, you know, straight out in front of you like, like at an angle. It's like a 45 degree angle. Down. 45 degree angle. Like a triangle. Yeah. Versus if it's, if it's out, you take your, your arms and you fold them up and try and like touch your shoulders with your hands and keep them flat. Yeah. Cause you're and like then, pointing away from away. You. Right? That's how and I think that, about it. And then that's what she did. She went, she really exaggerated. She was like in and like bent in to like point into the court. And then she like stood up and did this back arch thing and was like out. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. So, and I said, yeah. I said, oh, I can't do that. I did that at yoga this morning, and I my back hurts. And she laughed a lot, and um, and I said, no, like I don't. We always bend forward, and she wanted to bend backwards today, and I was not okay with that. Um, and then uh, I said, okay, well, I've got the in and out thing, and I said, what do I do if an angry parent charges over to me because I make a call, and this <laughs> this 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 uh this ref is. A uh, full like foot shorter than I am, probably weighs you know I I don't know what not very much sopping wet, and she like put out muscle arms and she was like they're coming through me first, buddy, <laughs> and I laughed and I said I'm glad you're there and she's like oh I've handled my fair share of crazy people, and then she was like man I wish I wish I had red cards that'd be fun if I could have just have red cards and I was that'd like you fun. yeah and I said wouldn't it said, you could become known as the red card ref and you would people would tremble. At your name that you were coming in refereeing. <laughs> and she started to be like, yeah, I could learn. She was basically saying like she could learn cool like magic tricks with them to make it like disappear, or, like reappear behind people's ear and like red card. <laughs> really, really losing the plot here a little bit. I think yeah. uh, I don't yeah. really know. Yep. Yeah. And then she had to blow her whistle and I had to go stand in the corner for the entirety of the game. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had, uh, I had a few moments where and I, I at first I was like, so do I only, because I didn't ask these questions, but I was like, so do I only, like, do I only do the hand signals if it's, like, questionable? Or do I always do the hand signal to dis- to determine where the ball was um, in play? Well, don't I do don't, it when it's, like, on the other side. That's not, that's not how that works, right? Right, no, it needs to, to be on my side. Part. <laughs> right, but if, but if the ball lands out of bounds by, like, 14 feet... Oh, no, do I, I don't think right, you have to. Do I need a signal? I don't know. I didn't ask these questions. So I, I kind of was like, okay, if it's within, like, a foot either side, that's what I'll do. I'll make that call then with my little hand signal thingies. Um, and I did I mean, it. Yeah, I think if it's, like, nine feet behind the line i feel like hand signals are probably extraneous at that point right Don't yes even, like it's clearly out just be like yep <laughs> yep you didn't you don't need me for that one Good. yeah when, like wow. yeah <laughs> when it hits the side curtain or whatever they had on this thing so um oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh so that's what we did uh it was a great game uh and team did very well so and we were all very tired returning. Um, oh, yeah. So. Man. <laughs> oh, did, man. Did, did you have any terrifying moments of or the, any of the other parents like almost really angry? I don't know how angry parents get at small children. But... Very angry. Um, uh, not, I'm not going to uh, say angry, but really. I'm going to say just like loud. Like, oh, my goodness. And I, I was reflecting on this as I was driving home. And I was like, okay, like, as a parent... I'm sure it's nice to know that there are like other parents cheering on your kid, but like also they don't need to be cheering louder than me. Like that's, that's a bit much when another parent is cheering louder than the kid's own parent or like they're more invested in it. I think you've overstepped your bounds as like person. Mm, I I don't know. I'm a very loud cheer, Right. But again, it's really weird because like our school, Right. So our school, the the culture of cheering is like not existent Mm. and it's real weird. Right. Growing up being in like the pet band and like being in all the like Rogersville stuff. Right. Like, yeah, loud, loud cheering Mm -hmm. at all times. Right. Like I, the student section was almost thrown out of a sectionals basketball game one time because they were too loud. (laughs) (laughs) whoopsie daisy but like yeah in my school like the culture of cheering is like non-existent so it's real awkward sure because like i'm cheering and everyone else is just sitting there with their arms crossed staring at things like that's not and i'm just cheering like oh, random sure. things like yeah let's go right and like yeah that's there's, it. there's a difference between being engaged and being like everything is like the be all end all i think i re- i think i re- referred i told the story of like maybe I didn't of, of we were, someone was down some points and, and we, the girl came up to score and their parent was like, only 15 more. And I was like, what? That's, that's a bit, what? Why I know you want to be you? encouraging, but like, yeah, that's not, that's not helpful. Um, so 
there were some very loud, boisterous. I people. feel like just saying like, let's get another one. I feel like yes, that's, that's yes. Good turning and right. letting them know that they good. You scored one. Now you need to do that fifteen more times, yeah, but no pressure, that. right? Yeah. Like that's that's not helpful. Um. So, but yes, people were not. Uh, they weren't too bad. It makes it hard the way the um, they were looking to me though because the way the we we had to travel to this and the way the 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 community center was that we were playing in had the setup of the all of the bleachers were only on one end, oh, so weird. you had to look long ways down the court, mm. and so and the home team was closer. And so yeah. they all of their serves and their returns were far away from them, and they could not see Too what bad. some of these Mystery. calls were. Yes. You should have volunteered, suckers. That's yeah, what's it's up. just like, been yeah. like, if you really wanted to know, you'd be over here. So, um, they uh, so they there were a few times where where I had to like really signal of like what it was because people were very invested in whether the return on this game of third and fourth graders was oh yeah around again you know, again high now, stakes olympic volleyball now like that's what girls are having fun it's whatever that's fine like just and and as long as they are they are the ones being competitive i have no problem with this but when it's like you know the guy in the back who's like frustrated about how the call went you're like no 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 oh man no no we have we have several of those parents and they're terrifying to sit by because you're like but this is like all of a sudden this is like not fun for me to watch like i can't imagine (laughs) what the kids playing or like like i don't want to be near this because it's not enjoyable experience to sit in the bleachers uh, with your (laughs) negativity about sixth grade sports okay so like (laughs) yes calm down yes or the guy who kept uh because of where he was he couldn't see the score so he kept yelling to see the score and they would have to like turn the little scoreboard on the table to show him and it was this and he would do it after each play basically and for a for a little while, and then he did stop. But it was like, okay, okay, like we 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 get it. Like I, you're stressed about the score. I hear what I hear you saying is you're stressing about the score, and and normally you would just obsessively look at it, but you can't. So you've got to ask this the the scorekeeper to do that for you. It's really annoying. Like, come on, I just <sighs> so anyway, it was good. I had a lot of fun. Really had a lot of fun. The team did great. Uh. And I think we have one more. We have a tournament this Saturday. So, oh boy, have another one. It'll be our third turn, third turn, second, second or third tournament. I don't know. Um, lot, lot of volleyball up here. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was that is a lot of it. Ooh, yeah, tournament volleyball. That's rough stuff. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, it's a nighttime tournament. So like. Oh, games. No. Why? Why I are don't... small children playing? Why are fourth, third, and fourth graders playing volleyball? Well, at so like yeah, nine thirty so at night. <laughs> well, okay, so it's not night. Okay, so I'm going to say nighttime, but that's because I'm an old man. But like our game tonight started at six forty-five p.m. Mm-hmm. and like, and it was thirty minutes away for us. So you know, it's it's a bit when we get done and everything. Um, the tournament starts at four p.m. on Saturday. And the last game will be held at eight o'clock. And I, I think that's late. But then again, I'm, I think that's late. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I don't. <laughs> uh, like little kids, that is kind of late, right? Like, right. That's what I'm. That's you know, that's what I'm getting at. Like, sure, I'll get over it. But you know, and I know we're kind of weird because like our kids go to bed at like. 7 30 so it's just it's late to do that um so we'll see we'll see how the tournament goes i don't know any of the other teams that are playing um but uh we'll bring our snacks and a brew coffee and um you can almost actually walk to this one it's actually kind of nice so hey that is nice so yeah. that's good yes i'm very excited about this um but yeah 
yeah, that was how we finished the night. Uh, we started the day with with yoga, as I mentioned earlier, um, which broke me very badly. Um, <laughs> very, oh my gosh! Oh, it's yeah, it's fine. Um, the lady who teaches it uh, used to have a yoga studio here in town, and now she just does these things for you know for people. And um, my goodness, I we did this thing where we what did we do? We were I. I always like the progression of yoga because it starts up where you're standing and then throughout you just like get lower and lower to the ground before you, you know, you fall asleep at the very end. That's my favorite kind. Um, and this, we were, we were, we were on, we had to lay on our stomachs. Okay. So we lay on our stomachs. All right. So if you lay out, it's flat on your stomach, put your hands out like a T. Then you were supposed to take like your left arm and put your left hand under your left shoulder and then push over to kind of roll yourself over and bring your leg over with it so that you were stretching out your right shoulder right can you imagine that of laying flat and then leaving your right hand and arm extended straight rolling over onto your shoulder and 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 stretching it from that way um we did that a lot um and that hurt quite much. i'm having a little bit of trouble visualizing that one but uh yeah. it's fine it's okay well, okay it's okay so you're lying flat on flat imagine your face first down on the ground yes and you place your arms out as a t okay leaving oh okay yes okay. okay now if you imagine that take your left hand and slide it under your left shoulder so you kind of scrunch your arm up and then you're going to do a one arm push-up and you're going to push that shoulder up. Your left shoulder is going to rise. Your right shoulder is going to lay on, going to push into the ground. And Ow. you're going to stretch your arm no, back and around. No, no, yeah. No, I, I started so. to do that. And the person leading, it was like, oh, no, Colin, you have to stretch your, you know, do something with your arm. I was like, yeah, I would if I could, uh, but I can't. Just, <laughs> this is as much as I got, man. <laughs> she came That's all there is. So she came over and she put one, a little foam block under my head so I wouldn't have to strain my neck so bad to make ah. this work. And I was like, ah, oh, this is this is nice. And then we did this. We did this thing. It was, we were about flexibility in our hands and our arms. And, you know, imagine you go down into a plank or, um, you know, cat cow where you or it's called table where you you're on your hands and knees, basically, with your back flat. Okay. okay yes, I know okay. that. <laughs> Okay, imagine that. And usually your fingertips are pointing away from you, like you're, you're in their normal hand position. We okay. did these, we did this with our hands inverted. So we brought, we twisted our hands so that our fingertips were pointing back to our knees. No, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> and Megan, Megan's uh, on my right, on my right. And she looks over and she goes, no, you're, no, point your fingers backwards. And I was like, I cannot. <laughs> They don't go that way. <laughs> they kind of go out to the side and stop. So I'm. This is what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a lot of yoga experience. Right, Susan does yoga. Um, right, you know she likes it. Um, more for like the relaxation and the like a little bit of stretching. Right. Sure. Uh, a long time ago, I used to do it with her, but she uh she got tired of like her trying to be all like zen and relaxing, and me being like. Eh. <laughs> no, <laughs> like <laughs> I was like, this is beneficial for one of us only, and it isn't me. Yeah. So, like, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go leave you to it and uh, let you do your relaxing. I'm gonna go hide. Um, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> oh no, it was. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm kind of the same way. Megan really likes to go to it. Um, and um, it was. Uh, it was, it was, it was hilarious. Um, but it was, it was good to be there. And also it was like, right when all the rain was humming. So it actually was kind of relaxing, but my goodness, there were times where my little 70 year old teacher was really kicking my butt with what was going on. And I was like, okay, I'm fine. Like, I'm just going to do what I can do. And that's all I can do right now. And I'm not going to hurt myself because I, <laughs> oh, because I was doing something. And she was like, oh, you need to straighten that out. And I was like, no, that hurts. And she goes, is it, is it, is it, um, is it stabbing or something kind of pain? And I was like, no. And she goes, oh, so it's just kind of discomfort. And I was like, well, it's not just discomfort. You know, I don't like it. And she's like, no, we can deal with that. And I was like, no, but this is me. I don't like being discomfortable. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like no, 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 no. We don't need to, we don't need to worry about that much. It's fine. I don't want to. 
Oh, mm. Yeah, yeah, that's no, no, no. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we started off the day with, and I'm, I'm still here. We, here we, that was that was literally twelve hours ago, and I'm still, uh, I'm still recovering. <laughs> That's what I would do if I... That would be me. Like, definitely. 100%. Because <laughs> I can't. Oh. I cannot. I probably need to. Because I do have those days where I, like, wake up in the morning and I have laid in, like, the most confusing position. And my shoulder's just like, eh. Nope. I'm just going to be stuck here for a little bit. I'm not going to move at all. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah, just uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff, and and the whole, <laughs> the whole, um, the whole theme was to find find glimmers in your life. And she, I forget what she did. she said. Glimmers what? were um, yeah, a glimmer was something that gave you gave you hope or like inspired you or you discovered something new that you were capable of. And <clears throat> I was like, yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, glimmer is maybe just a, a whole new realm of pain that I'm encouraged that I'm finding out right now. I discovered right now that my shoulders are very inflexible. Like that's what I've learned today. <laughs> so what a weird word to latch onto and to make you think. Right? I feel like that, that happens a lot, though. People like cabbage onto like a, a very specific word, but then they say it in some sort of context that just confuses me. Right. Oh. When people say like say say phrases like that, like you know, find your glimmer, like uh, no, stop speaking to me, please. I can't. <laughs> yes, well, that's like um, um. Have that you heard of spoon? A lot. Have you heard of spoons? Uh, I eat with spoons. Yes, okay. I have no. heard of spoons. I no, know. No, no. Spoon. Uh, I know. Do you know the Spoon Man? Right. Okay. Uh, mm. Do you know? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> feel the rhythm while you can uh, uh, feel the uh, rhythm while you can uh, um uh, no spoons spoons is one of those words that are are meant to be like how many spoonfuls of energy do you have in a given day and i've each, never heard this okay before yeah. this and sounds each, like something <clears throat> weird teachers would say and i'm it's um i don't want, don't it, want. It you can, there's I'm okay so I'm I'm including the Wikipedia article for spoon theory no no um, not spoon theory spoon theory. A spoon theory um it's a metaphor describing the amount of physical and or mental energy that a person has available for daily tasks and activities and how it can become limited so basically what people do is like getting out of bed is is one spoon worth okay um, wait a minute. Versus like going shopping is four spoons. I feel <laughs> and, like that ratio is a problem. Okay. Like I'm not gonna like poo poo anybody who, you know, cause there's, there's, we never want to get out of bed every day. But if the act of getting out of bed is a whole spoon of energy, I feel like the ranking system for this is going to be like, what's the point? Like, I feel like a spoon is too small a measurement because you'd be like, uh, oh, what was going to work out in the park with your friend today? I'm like, oh, it was about 17 spoons. Like, what doesn't, why would you even say that sentence? <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't. It's yeah. so weird. It's, <clears throat> I think, I think specifically people, it, like it's focused around mostly like daily tasks of like to to describe i think the origins of it came came from people with like chronic illnesses or um that's what i was saying that's why i didn't want to poo-poo anybody no no no, no 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 like, no. like cr- clinically depressed people right yeah. this is like you do it does take a whole lot to get out of bed right i'm not i'm not yes i'm not i'm not saying it doesn't oh no but i'm no, just no. saying for like normal like uh everyday vernacular i feel like the spoon is a weird measurement it is it is weird it is weird. like and if then, you have a good day are you like oh today was like a teaspoon <laughs> right like because that's where my brain goes of like yeah so how many teaspoons how many spoons equal a cup of energy or like how do i like what's the but no it's it's <laughs> yeah is there a scale is it like yeah. a kitchen measuring system yeah like yeah pinch but- dash quarter <laughs> teaspoon like what what is happening <laughs> 
tablespoon. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. Right. <laughs> and, and, and people will have different, um, like, smidge spoons, right? spoon, inter- spoons allocated to different, like, different activities. So, um, They'll have, especially for people who are on the, um, like are on the spectrum, they'll say uh, like sensory spoons are a big thing for them because they are able to describe how a better way of communicating, like how overloaded they can get in a particular situation of like, you want me to go to a party? Oh, well, I only have like two sensory spoons and one social spoon left. So I don't know if I want to expend that spoon on it, it kind of gives them the idea some idea of currency as as opposed to just energy I, levels i guess um, so which i mean but i have one <clears throat> like how tired are you one neutron star for <laughs> spoonful <laughs> right <it's> like, <laughs> but but this gets to the it's a it's a it's a meaningless word right but people just start to use it like glimmer like did you find your glimmer yeah. today right like what's your spoon and i'm like i it makes it really hard to have conversations when when i'm using words that i i'm i have completely different associations with yeah that's yeah i guess because i'm not in a situation where i would use that vernacular right you talk, yeah. start talking to me about spoons like i'm thinking about our previous conversation of what is the best spoon for cereal use right uh huh what is the difference between like teaspoon, tablespoon, soup spoon? Right. This is what I'm thinking. About. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, or or how McDonald's has discontinued their spoon. Did you know this? They why? Yeah. Okay. So, well, so the McFlurry so, spoon. The McFlurry spoon. Oh, is it because their McFlurry machine never works, and they're just like, yeah, just forget it. <laughs> well, no, no, it's because um, it's too many single use plastics. Um, because. Uh-huh basic but see here's the thing but the whole reason they did it in the first place was for sanitary reasons so they didn't have to continually clean things well and also it's faster right because they don't have to because if you were trying to literally just throw handfuls of mcflurries out a window nonstop, you don't have time to clean you don't um it takes too much time and so they engineered i i personally think it's an engine it's a beautifully um beautiful way of solving this problem of we'll just make the spoon the mixer right I just, i'm like oh what that's amazing and so yes they are getting rid of the spoon and they are going back to cleaning the mixers and instead you will get one of their ridiculously flimsy and terrible other plastic spoons that's weird it also sort of goes into the what we talked about a while back is that McDonald's is losing its role in the universe, right? Like they think they're a, some sort of like actual restaurant, you know, and not like a fast food burger place, yeah. <laughs> which is what you are, right? Like, I, <laughs> I feel like that's not <clears throat> the job, right? Like you're not, an actual restaurant McDonald's don't have wait staff or like a maitre d. I, I listened to a very interesting conversation the other day on some sort of, I was watching some sort of video, right? I, I because I, I've fallen into the rabbit hole of like uh, cooking videos on YouTube, right? Cause I want to like become a better at making food. Right. Okay. Uh, side note, the pizza I made yesterday, the best one yet. Oh, yo, it well, was good. <laughs> well, this this brings up a whole other side discussion about what we're doing over the Thanksgiving when we're all together and how. Oh, yeah, we true. So, anyway, well, we can but, come back to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but they were talking about they were, it was like two chefs, like they're actual chefs, and they were they like work in restaurants in like New York and stuff, and they like own restaurants and all that stuff. But they're talking about how one of them was talking about how the word restaurant. They were like responding to something somebody said. How the word restaurant in the United States is used sort of wrong because mm. like the uh, like every place is not a restaurant. You know what I mean? Uh. Like in like Europe, he said he was saying specifically France, obviously, but like you don't like a restaurant carries a very specific connotation of like wait staff, 
front of house, like maitre d, right? Like that is, a, mm. that's what a restaurant is. Like it's a high, high level yes. thing, right? Like high levels of service. And like, it's this very specific connotation where in like the United States, like everyone just says restaurant for everything. But like in Europe or France, it would, act, it's actually like a bistro or like he, he listed off this like big, many words that I've never heard before and like <laughs> oh. some other things. I don't remember exactly like, you know, like a smaller thing just has like a few food items and you it's like sit down and there's like no wait staff and they just like you just grab your food off the counter. Like that's called something else. Right. Like it they, everything has like a specific name. You know what I mean? Uh like like again, like a bistro or like a pub or like a you know, whatever, like a cafe, that like a cafe and a bistro, technically different, right? I don't remember what mm. he said the difference was, but like, technically, that's a different thing with different expectations, right? Because in like, you know, with different levels of food and, and that kind of stuff. So they were talking about how like, the restaurant experience is like the top, the tippity top thing, uh. <clears throat> right? It's like, your, you know, your nice tablecloths and your full size, you know, everything like lots of different back of house people and like all this stuff. And like everybody's highly trained and like that's like all they do is they've worked in the service industry for years, right? And that's like the best experience you can get. Whereas like the bistro is just like, you know, some people that are like starting out in a restaurant. He was also talking about how like I think the way the reason they started talking about this, they were talking about the culture of tipping, right, in the US. I think that's what they're talking about. Anyway, because mm. <laughs> he was saying like, yeah, you know, tipping comes with like an expectation of service. Like you should tip when your service is really good. And in like other countries, that's what it's based on. Like you can't just walk into a restaurant and get a job. Like they're going to ask you like, what else have you done? Like you can say, oh, I, I was, a you know, a bus person here and I worked in this cafe and I did this job and you like, they won't hire you to work at certain places if you don't have any experience in any other like restauranty thing. Right. right. You can't just like go in and become the major D right. That yeah. doesn't sound that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a different, it is a whole, um, it is a whole career, right. Yeah. In a, in a very, very respectable one in, in many other, many other cultures and places. Yeah. But I just, I just thought that that was like an interesting, I just, that just made me think of that whenever we're talking about the, how McDonald's is like, oh yes, we are a restaurant and we're doing this. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you're like a fast food place or like a diner almost, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> so get, stop charging me so much for your hamburgers and just clean your machines. That's all I want you to do. I'll bring, bring back the um, self serve uh, refills and soda fountains because those are yeah, going away. That's a terrible idea. Okay, I, like people we made it, so much advancement into those. Like that we had all the cool ones where it was like one button and you could mix all the different flavors and choose all that stuff. And like, and they're like, no, that technology not for you anymore. Bye. Like, yeah, ugh. and I guess I guess part of that. I mean, that's like a like again right now. People aren't. They're just like not going into the restaurant. You know what I mean? into the establishment see i messed up i messed up oh right. they're, they're not going into the the eatery you know <laughs> and so like if like but even though that's like a right now thing that's still like a little bit of post covid thing people are apparently willing to pay like a whole lot extra to have just random strangers deliver their food i don't mm -hmm. no thank you right like i don't <laughs> i don't know why you do that but whatever uh, especially McDonald's, like just get it. It's already. Well, it's, I don't. They already have, don't they already have a drive-through. Okay, how, like it's fine. How people can take the McDonald's and then like add the upcharge for Uber Eats and then also tip seven dollars on top of it. I'm like, it was just a Big Mac, and now it cost you thirty four dollars. Like, whoa. yeah, it's not even really worth the like whatever a Big Mac is now, right? Like, it's not <laughs> it's not even that good. It's not really even worth that much money. Like, the cost. I mean, that's why McDonald's is struggling, right? Because the cost benefit is not there anymore. Because like you would go there and eat for like cheap. You could eat like relatively a large amount of food for like no money. And now you're eating like kind of 
some food for a lot of money. Like that's not really a good ratio to have. You know what I mean? Like that's not what I want as a customer. <laughs> nope. you know? Not at all. But again, like, I don't know. Like I haven't eaten at McDonald's in a very long time. Not just because of that stuff annoys me, but like, you know, trying to make sure my cholesterol isn't 9,000. Yeah, you no. Know. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's working, I guess. I had to go do my wellness checkup for work and they're like, your cholesterol levels are excellent. Excuse you? Can you say that again, please? That is not a phrase <laughs> that's ever... <laughs> been said to me before i just need you to repeat that so i can let that soak in i don't know <laughs> <Ta-da>! <laughs> like, i need you to no, no no really highlight that part of the piece of paper please because let's I, say that again let's say yeah. it again i was i was confused so but yeah that's yeah. it yeah. yeah all that to say why are they getting rid of the spoons that's why i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. So, unfortunately, it may take you a little bit longer, but they're going to be uh, cleaning cleaning things more. So they won't be. They will not be right. The, there's one thing I remember from working in a restaurant: minimum wage people don't want to clean random stuff. They don't. So, I mean, and like you're already doing so many other things, and you're like, I'm getting paid no dollars, so. I'll get to it later. <laughs> like it's just what Yeah. And it's it it is. It's I under I understand. I understand. It's you know, priorities and trying to get people to um to care is 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 hard and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, so what's what's new? What's new in your it you uh it's your end of the world? Um well Parent teacher conferences tomorrow. Yay. Huzzah! So excited. I love them. Woohoo. Not really. Uh, so we'll do that. That's tomorrow. So I just have to be at school for 8,000 hours tomorrow. Feels like. And that's pretty much it, right? Like, end yeah. of the quarter happened. Trying to get some stuff done. Trying to do the lab today, viscosity lab. Ooh. 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 Oh, important, important viscosity lab results, actually. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, my viscosity lab is we, in order to test viscosity, you know, we could use a, like a Zon cup and like, you know, time different liquids and then calculate viscosities based on our time, right? We could do that, which is like how you really measure viscosity or, <clears throat> what you could do is you get six condiments and you put them on a board and you race them to the bottom of an inclined plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did today. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I got, we like, we just see which one is fast. We just like compare, it's like comparative viscosities, right? Like thicker versus thinner. So we, I yeah. put them on a, board that I cover with like a trash bag uh, and then I just say three, two, one, go and then I raise it up and they're responsible for timing one and they just have to see how long it takes to go down the thing. Oh, what kind of what kind of board are you using with uh... um, it's like a like a like a marker board thing like a whiteboard. Oh sure. Right. Yeah. And it's just like a big one where it's one that I had. It was like it's in my room and let's the f- it's supposed to have a frame on it so it can hang on the wall but the frame is broken so it's just the board it's like cardboard with the marker surface on it so oh i just like okay well i'm not going to use this for anything else except for <laughs> right <laughs> sauce I'm raising so i just again i just put a plastic bag on it and then like a trash bag like a big like 50 gallon trash bag thing i cut it up and then tape it over the side and then boom <laughs> good to go very nice so what what were the condiments? All right, so uh, in the I I like to use fast food condiments because they're already in the small little package. Yes, right, and that way I don't have to bring things from home <laughs> and like yes. worry about going to buy something from Walmart if I like 
am going to use it mostly for squirting on a board. <laughs> Not <laughs> right? as much. It seems a bit yeah. extraneous, right? So I use, I use like fast food packets, right? So today, we always try to have ketchup and mustard because I can just get those from the school cafeteria. All right, I'm just going hmm, down there. What? Last week, what? I was like, last week they had hamburgers for lunch. And I just <laughs> look at the kids. One of the classes, I was just like, okay, guys. I need you guys to bring me some ketchup and mustard packages. And they're like, why? It's like, don't worry about why. Okay. That's not important right now. I just need them for science. And, yeah. <laughs> and they did. So I got a whole bunch. <laughs> Ta-da. Kaboom. <clears throat> but this year, I had a very important question that I needed answered. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know which... Taco Bell sauce has the highest viscosity. So not only did we just do, we did ketchup and mustard standard, and then I did uh, all four of the current Taco Bell sauces that I can get a hold of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> For amazing. my six, to fill out my, my six, uh, my data table of six sauces. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. So important sauce update. Lowest viscosity Taco Bell sauce yep. is unsurprisingly the mild sauce. Yeah. Right. It just runs straight out of there. It does. It's hard to, it's it's just hard to like control. <laughs> you can't even put it on anything. It just like shoots out. Highest viscosity, the fire sauce. Really? No, by a significant margin. Yes. I don't remember the exact times, but it took uh, several mi- minutes. Whereas the mild sauce made it, my board is like three feet long. Right. Yeah, and it's not it's not traveling all the three feet because I put in a piece of tape for the start and finish line. Sure, the the mild sauce was like seventeen seconds. Like it was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think the order of lowest to highest viscosity Taco Bell sauces: mild, hot, Diablo. And fire is the most highly viscous Taco Bell sauce. So there you go, listeners. That is a very scientific test that you didn't know that you needed. Okay. <laughs> you, that is the official ranking. Uh, with multiple trials today. Okay. Multiple trials. Every trial they performed similarly. So I think we have enough, uh, enough data here to definitively say fire sauce, highest viscosity Taco Bell sauce currently out of those four that I could get in the package. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> real, real groundbreaking work we're doing here. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm ready for the, for the, for the Nobel, right? That's yeah, why I'm yeah, going to submit that. Go. Uh, I think you'd be good to go. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, a, a, an establishment that knows its place, right? Because I just went in after school and I was like, Hey, I just need a burrito. And then I just, went over to the sauce table and like flung a whole bunch of my bag and left like, but that it only cost me a dollar. So, you know, that's fun. Come on. What you kind know, of, what, what kind of, what, what kind of burrito? Did you get just bean burrito or? Oh yeah. Just the, the bean one. Yeah. I just, I just needed something. I need an excuse to go in and oh, get shit. sauce. Right. I didn't want to just like walk in and take sauce <laughs> without buying anything. I thought that would be kind of weird. Right. I'd be, <laughs> <laughs> a little suspect so i just went in and got that and then like, yeah kind of loaded up my sauce i have some sauce at home already because like you know when you go to taco bell sometimes when you ask for sauce the drive through person will give you like three sauces hmm. or the other the only other option is they just plunge their hand into a large box and yeah. just they bring out as many as they could physically hold in their hand and they drop it in your bag. <laughs> I, those people so you have not enough sauce or so much sauce that you don't need to ask for sauce again for like a month. Right. Like yeah. this. <laughs> and those are the people you want, you hope they're getting a raise because they are doing God's work. Uh, yeah. Because yes, yeah. fewer things are more frustrating when you're like, can I have mild sauce? And they give you like three packets and you're like, no, I need, I need you to understand. <laughs> like, yeah. like, first of all, I ordered like four tacos. This is not going to work out here. Like this is what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is- Mathematically, this is impossible for me to do. Um, yeah. So 
Yeah, I, I have started to say, you know, good handful or like a big <clears throat> handful. Don't say that here. You will not oh, know what to really? do with all of the sauce no. you get. No, these people. Yeah, are... there's a couple of people here. Oh, my goodness gracious. They just. Blam. It's it's insane. Like, I have so much sauce. I don't. I just, I just throw it away. Like, I keep it. Oh, should keep it around for a while and then like all right we just kind of get <laughs> i don't That's know how great. long it's supposed to stay around so like <laughs> wow <laughs> they just That's like intense. dump it upon you it's kind of crazy <laughs> so yeah that big goings on i had a oh milestone moment also oh. <laughs> right Hash, this is brought this is brought to you by hashtag not sponsored. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to not sponsored at all yet. Hey, what's up? Um, I had to buy uh a new set of rechargeable batteries for my Xbox, right? Because they're all wireless controllers now. Oh. You know? And so I use rechargeable batteries because why would you not do that? Right. Right? Because otherwise I would have spent like 20 billion dollars on batteries right <laughs> so i have a set of rechargeable batteries and they're just like they were not like i would charge them and then they would not last like a day and then they would <laughs> they would be dead Bye-bye. like they would turn on again uh-huh. and so i had to go buy more and then i realized i've had these same rechargeable batteries for like over 12 years i'm pretty sure <laughs> what yeah yeah they've been they've been pretty low for a while right they haven't been holding a charge like real great for like a while now but i'm pretty sure i've been using the same like I, there's four right i had the same four and i switch them around the same four uh rechargeable batteries for like uh, over 12 years <laughs> that's insane yeah yeah that uh, this is the hashtag not sponsored part. That Energizer Bunny is no joke. Okay, that that is that is insane stuff. Like I, so obviously I had to go buy more Energizer batteries because oh, why would yeah. you not after that performance right that lasted <laughs> that lasted like over a decade of using the same batteries in my again not like a super power drain activity right like and i don't like you know i go through spurts where i play it a lot and i don't use it for like a while and it, but still <clears throat> that's a very impressive feat <laughs> that's amazing to have lasted this long so it's a little bit like wow i have to buy more batteries what a weird thing to do because i have not again i have not bought batteries in uh, at least 12 years possibly longer right Possibly longer than that. Just deal with that information what you will. <laughs> That's the minimum amount of time that these have had, that I've had these. So I... <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, unfortunately, now I'm, I'm concerned for you in that now you're going get, to gonna get like a year into these. I know. And I'm they're going to fail. And you're going to be like, there was a time. You could stake your life on these batteries. Now, we'll see how it goes. But I just, the last ones, just wanted to throw that report out there. What in the holy hand grenades is this? Like, I, I holy, holy power cables, Batman. I cannot <laughs> believe that, that I had those at last. There's no, I, I, I this. I almost like it. That's so just like, that's, that's insane. Uh, it's like, I almost don't believe that because that just never happens. Never happens. Yeah. But I, I, I'm pretty sure I've never bought any more. I, I don't know when I bought these. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I've been using the same set of batteries. Just, mm. I get there's four of them. I have four. Yeah. So I'd like, you know, switch them around, but, but still, we use the same sets of batteries for I I can't even fathom how long it's been. It's been a long yeah. time. <laughs> no, no, I mean I mean I believe you, but it's like it's unbelievable to think that the cause yeah. most people, you know, batteries like that, especially when they're 
used like that. But I guess, you know, you've been charging them and discharging them appropriately and not. Uh, so good, good battery management. Good on yeah. you. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm doing there. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, the reason I had to get more, I've been playing some video games, right? I've been swept up in the mania that is new video game releases. As oh, okay. As happens from time to time. Yes. You know? So, <clears throat> been playing uh, some Lies of P. Eh? Okay. Lies of P. Have you ever wanted to play a game that was like a dark fantasy steampunk inspired retelling of Pinocchio? Well, um, actually you have because... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's rad. <laughs> hey, so I, I should want this. I should want to do this. It's definitely want it. Huh. <laughs> I'm That's okay. interesting. I wasn't I was, you yeah, kinda of, I was tracking with you and then you were like, you know, of Pinocchio. I was like, Yeah, I'm boom. sorry. What? Wham. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like instead of like a it's still like the it's like 1880s, right? So that's where the like kind of steampunk influence comes in. But instead of like marionettes, they're like automatons. You know, like you're like an automaton thing. You like gears and oh. all that stuff, like that kind of deal. <clears throat> so it's that kind of vibe, right? That kind of like art style, where it's like the automaton was like the mechanical man, you know, kind of stuff. It's like that. So instead of they call them puppets right but they're actually like automatons that's what's the thing so that's kind of like the vibe is happening so it's like kind of dark fantasy e a little bit like very steampunky mm. but pinocchio <laughs> that's wild <laughs> it is kind of wild huh. Huh. so what's the what's the uh, story game like what's the what, oh, what are you well, doing this, well the story so far right uh, there's like apparently so like society created these puppets to be used to like help daily life right you know that's what they did and then uh, something happened and they turned like villainous and they like massacred the city oh my yes and so but the beginning of the game, you are sent out to go save Geppetto, <laughs> right? Um, uh, and don't worry because you have a little like lantern guide automaton puppet thing that's sure. def- definitely named Jiminy. Uh, and just like, hangs out on your belt, right? That's important. So you like save him, and you're trying to like figure out what caused this puppet. I think they call it the puppet frenzy, right? Mm. And so you try to look for the cause of that. You like save some people and. You're trying to figure out why the puppets do this. And then, like, because it's, like, fantasy setting, it turns out there's some alchemists mixed up in all this somehow, right? Uh, And they're, like, you know, they were fighting over this... uh, They discovered this, like, magic rock thing. And that's what they used to give the automatons the power. But the alchemists were using it for, like, alchemical things. Unclear at the current progress of the game, right? (laughs) And so, <laughs> and, and so that's what's happened. And it's like turned the the puppets have turned evil, and then like, well, and then uh, also like some other things are like turning into monsters, probably alchemist related, if I uh, had to guess. And so uh-huh. like it's like a bit of that like horror y element, right? So it's uh, it's pretty cool though. It's fun. Hey, it's like mega hard, but like <laughs> it's fun. What what makes it particularly hard? Uh, I guess especially compared to uh, maybe other other types of games. Oh, just like the combat style is like a it's like a high demanding like actiony kind of thing, like dodge block, but like very precise timing for like blocky stuff. So it's just like very difficult to oh do the timing. It's like a very timing based thing, so it's it can be hard <clears throat> for sure. So yeah, that's what I'm doing mostly this week. Playing weird Pinocchio games. So that's, <laughs> yeah. Didn't know I needed that in my life. No. But no. the answer is yes. 
Yes, I'm looking, I did. Looking at some screen grabs and stuff from it as well, and it just looks yeah. beautiful as well. Right? I just like the art style, too. I yeah. think I really like it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. So yeah, I'm not like I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea how far I am. Still, still far enough to be like I don't really know what's happening. So you know that's where <laughs> right. far far enough, but not far enough. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> well, well, I will look forward to more updates on that as you, you go. go through. Yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. That's yeah. That's pretty much it. Huh? Uh, gearing up for. I mean, a four day weekend, right? So, parent teacher conferences tomorrow. So, we don't have school Friday. And they have an in service day Monday. Yay. I don't know. <laughs> well, what are you, um, what are you, what are you going to be in, in servicing, in service well, of? Well, I don't have the schedule yet, but I think the elementary is still theming all of their in service days off of the reading instruction. Um, so I don't really know what I'm going to be doing on Monday. <laughs> gotcha. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll see. But I don't know if I don't have to do that. If I don't have to sit in a, a big long in service about phonics, which I hope I don't, uh, I'm going to probably work on my. The stuff I got to do, right? I've been like, I have a present, like a PowerPoint thing I'm in the middle of making that I need to finish that goes along with my, uh, so I do like these uh, story time things, right? Where I will just like do like a myth retelling, you know? Right. So like in, in like Greece and stuff, we do like the, the, what do we do? We do the like the Trojan War with like you know all that stuff, and then we do uh I do one about uh Theseus, right, and the Minotaur. I do that one. <clears throat> and so I've made these PowerPoints that are just like the pictures to go along with my story. They're basically just backdrops. So I'm like I'm telling it just like verbally, but I have mm-hmm. like pictures behind me where it's like, oh hey, look, this is whoever. So I have to make well, I decided to do that last year. Like right before I got to the Thessies and the Minotaur story. And so I do need to finish making one for the Epic of Gilgamesh because we talk about that one in the Mesopotamia stuff, obviously. So I need to make some backdrop slides for my Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, the redacted version. Don't worry, listeners. The redacted version for six, sixth grade appropriate redacted version of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, hey, that story gets weird. Uh, but I have to just put some like pictures in there to go with my slideshow. I have note cards and stuff that I can remember because that's a long one. But like, <laughs> mm. we hit some of the highlights. So I got to do that. Uh, and then I'm probably going to do some more uh, chapter reading, audiobook reading for my stuff. That worked really good last time. I used it the other day. Yeah. It seemed to work really good. So got to do some more of that. Is it you you reading or yes, it's me reading. Oh, what? Ah. I don't know. Just... Yeah, Morgan Freeman was unavailable. So it's just me. Right. Um I just Okay, well anyway, <laughs> I'm not interested anymore. Never mind. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> I was reading the like just recording myself reading the like some of the book chapters. Okay. For yeah. some of my uh special education students so they can like listen and follow along with the stuff so they can read it because some of the stuff is hard to read like by yourself so sure if you can have that to look at and do stuff that they can do that so they seem to like it and it helped them last time so we're just gonna go with that um and <laughs> <laughs> so i did that i have my I have some stuff hooked up on my desk at work so i just have i did that so i might do that some more too so, if I don't have to go sit through a reading meeting, which I really hope I don't, because that doesn't sound like a thing that I need to go to. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Say, I can't go to your reading meeting. I have to go reading right now. Yeah. Bye. Oh, no. Whoops. 
<laughs> so we'll see. But again, I don't have an agenda, so I don't know what nice. the plan is. Gotcha. So I don't know. <laughs> I hope I get the agenda before Sunday night. That would be real nice. I would not I would not like it for it to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably fine. It might be wishful thinking, but I hope it's not <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> uh, our administration has gotten into a real bad habit of like emailing like really important information like at seven thirty at night to people. <gasps> what? That's just like like I got an email the other day about something, and it was definitely sent at like it was on Saturday. It was last Saturday, and I got an email at like. 7.20 and I didn't read I don't read my email at home that's not what home is for mm. uh, but one of my fellow teachers emailed me or texted me and said you see that? I was like uh, see what? what are you talking about? <laughs> please send screenshots I don't know what he, what's happening so I don't know I don't know why they do this, right? I think they just like take it for granted that people use like their school email on their phones, right? Oh, right. And so, like, I think they just take for granted that people do that and they'll just like send out stuff like all the time, which is weird because you can schedule an email to go out (laughs) later. Yeah, you can schedule it. Even if you're thinking about it right now, you could schedule that for tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> you know, like it's really kind of weird that they do that. And I don't put my work email on my phone, right? Because no, I don't want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> so like, I don't do it. And so every once in a while, I have no idea. I like get to work, and there's like these weird emails that like showed up at like. Over the weekend from <laughs> oh, no. the admin. And you're like, that yeah. is not how this works. Okay. I don't know. Again, this is one of those things where I'm very pedantic about this, but if they're going to harp about, you better make sure that you're at school between this time and this time, because those are your contracted hours. Oh, right. You better believe I'm not reading and responding to your email at eight 30 at night. That's not. <laughs> no. Okay. Like we all know teachers are doing things outside of hours anyway. Reading weird emails is not going to be on the list of things that I do. <laughs> no, right. and that that definitely is one of those. I, you're right. Of well, they know everybody does it anyway. <laughs> Everyone's on their phone anyway, so they're just going to go ahead and send it because they know you're going to get it. And I, that's it's so wrong, it's so wrong. And unfortunately, thing, right? Like, it's very well. Unfortunately, it's very effective because they um they get responses. I'm sure, right? And people because people are on their phones. All the time, yeah, yeah. It's real. It's real weird. Like, mm. I, don't, I don't really know like when this started happening, but it's been happening like a lot more. Like, just a lot of weird emails, like being not. And you know, some of them are important. Some of them are just not right. But if you're, you know, it's still like six thirty at night, and you're just I got these emails in my inbox the next day, and they're marked like after school was over like why would you do that right like i mean office courtesy would dictate that you schedule that email to be sent uh, the following morning at like eight o'clock uh-huh right because you know for sure everyone's going to be at school at eight o'clock right because we have to be there at like 7 40 7 45 something like that <clears throat> so you should schedule your emails to show up then I, if you're working and you're like doing stuff good that's fine you do that, whatever, but it, don't expect me to have it like read and ready to go. I got one last night. There was one last night in my inbox. Something that had to be done today. And they sent it at like 5 30 yesterday. Like, what, mm. what are you doing? <laughs> what is that? Mm. Nope. Nope. It's so, it's so nope. weird. Uh, and I, I understand people. I, I I understand people work different hours, but like I, for us, like I will tell my staff, 
like uh, Megan and I work weird hours. We we may we process stuff. We'll try to send them the next day. But if you get an email or you get a message in Slack at eleven thirty at night, that's just us processing stuff, and and you get to it the next day. But like, don't don't stress out. But that that may ha- that may happen. But I'm telling them in advance, and I'm telling them what to do with that when they get it at eleven yeah. thirty at night. Yeah, leave it for tomorrow. <laughs> yes, exactly. <clears throat> it's not not necessary for you to get to it all. Yeah. I don't know. It's just real weird. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we need to have an in-service day about email etiquette. I think that would be good <laughs> for just like everybody in general. Right? Like, do you, do you, do you really want to sit in that meeting? Do you listen, really want to sit? Again, this is a meeting that should take 20 minutes. I would gladly sit in this meeting for 20 minutes if it will make people send better emails. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, if you're going to send an email to the whole staff, use the subject line. Maybe that would be good. Maybe that would be something useful that you want to do. Maybe if you're going to send an email to the whole staff about something just kind of innocuous, don't put it in all cap, right? Don't do that. Uh, if you're going <laughs> to, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. if you're going to do this, like format your email in some way that makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I know that we don't need we don't, I don't need to do like the whole like you remember learning about like the 90 different types of like memo, right? Remember that? Oh yes. Right. right. Yeah. Maybe we don't need that, but like fantastic. Up the paragraph spaces would be good. Right. Like categorizing things in paragraphs when you have when you're gonna tell me three different things, give me three different paragraphs, you know. That would be good instead of having to be like where because you know it happens to be a lot where someone will be like well i put that in an email I'm like what you did yeah where is did that you? i read did that you? email for sure and i don't know where that is so <clears throat> or having your email be like so incredibly long and dense full of information again not separated with paragraphs or even you know, headings, if it's going to be real long, a heading would be Oof. nice. You know, that'd be good. <laughs> You're really asking a lot. Why? I know. I know. Right. That would be good. But, you know, I feel like sometimes they just like think about something and then like key it up and then fire it off. And you're like, well, this should have had some thought. Like, it's real weird getting an email from like a bunch of teachers and there's like spelling errors. <laughs> Ooh, right. <laughs> Huh. I mean, I'm not the best speller in the world, but like Google highlights it for me. <laughs> you know, well, like just like a quick read through or something here. Like let's let's add a little bit of <clears throat> let's pause, yeah. right? Reread, reread what you typed uh, before you send it. Right? Yeah. Like because you know you do that thing where you put like is is blah blah blah, you know, and you don't see it because your brain automatically deletes the word because it knows it's not necessary you know but and you're like if you just type it and then send it you're just getting a bunch of weird stuff that doesn't make sense (laughs) or it's vague because like we always get an email and then we'll go you understand what that meant oh no yeah huh now i gotta send a follow-up email for clarification and then someone gets mad because they you know told me i didn't read it (laughs) no, 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 no. <laughs> I did. I did read I it. Did. And therein lies the problem because you didn't write it correctly. Uh, yeah. Yes. We our, uh, our our software that we use in our company allows uh, the our clients to go in and edit their own information, which is which is both a, a curse and a blessing. It's it's wonderful that the onus is on them to make sure that it's right, so that if something doesn't, if like we feed two cups instead of a cup and a half. It wasn't me that wrote it down wrong. It was the client who didn't update it. So it's it's nice in that respect. Yeah. It's also terrible for the clients who will do a voice to text message in the oh, no. like, while they're driving and <laughs> they just like click send. <laughs> and then I'm looking at this and it might as well be in hieroglyphics because I'm like, there is no there's I cannot decipher any of this. And I 
I now have a phone call to make, and that's not what I wanted to do right now. It's like so the giant run-on sentence with like yes. no pun <laughs> and like ums and ahs and like oh well maybe not, but okay well let's go ahead and do that. And then like sometimes they'll have a conversation with their significant other who is also on the voice to text. <laughs> <laughs> and you're oh, like, no. you're like, oh no, why is this happening right now? No. Oh no. <laughs> Draining his words in there. Oh, it's, helpful. It's great. Mm. It sounds fun. That's uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's real precious. What it is. <laughs> real. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're going through a um, business thing where each day is like a challenge for what you do should do in your business, and we just finished with the uh, mission, vision, and values of what we want our company to be. And, that um, does not sound exciting at all. I'm not oh, gonna lie. That sounds almost as exciting as four hours of phonics uh, <laughs> PD. Right? That isn't right. <laughs> I it's it's you know it's a it's important for a couple reasons of like one, if we're trying to have consistent like marketing messaging and branding, like that's important too. If we're trying to make sure that all of our staff are on the same page and understand what we're working for, like that's important. But like, my goodness, it's literally just, we just sat there. I had a flip chart and a pen and we just sat there throwing words, like just writing random words and then glimmer. Was, right. What? Spoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Glimmer and spoon were the top two. Uh, and, Obviously. And, And just trying to figure out, like, you know, because it's like, oh, here's an exercise. Think of your top three staff members and then write five attributes that each one of them has that make your company better. Those those would be a great starting place for your values. And then you have to make a sentence with them. And I was just like, oh, Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 this is. And it gets to the point where you read it and you're like, well, those words are good, but like doesn't say anything or maybe it says something, but it's just so boring you know it's like ah oh, that's whatever a, oh no yeah i well, teachers like to do that thing too right where you have the <clears throat> we've done the thing in the past where you they like to do a thing where they put like these big flip chart papers on every wall and they all have like a some sort of topic that go with them and then you have to they put you in groups based on some very strange game and or association and or pick a color out of this box and uh you have to go group with people and then you have to go around and like discuss topics and put your answers on the board right and then you come back and then you have like these big talks about what that means and how we can and it's like i'm falling asleep in my chair i cannot deal with <laughs> yeah. yeah and i i mean this is it was it's me writing everything so my right my, my handwriting is terrible and i'm misspelling things left and right and it's like what does that say and i'm like it's just the thing it says you know foster that's what we want, we want to foster partnerships to equip you know thing i was like oh my gosh this is this is going places that's for sure <laughs> i mean it's a brainstorming activity you can not worry about Spelling yeah. and brainstorming activity. That's like the number one thing about brainstorming. You just write things, right? You don't care about spelling. You know. Well, except whenever if you're trying to, you know, yes and somebody, you have to know what you're yessing to make an and. Like you have to yeah, be able to read to the yes word. and somebody, right? It's brainstorming. You need to calm down. Teachers are also very bad about this, right? Like we know these things intrinsically, right? We know that like like I know, like I tell my kids, like, I don't really care. They're like, well, how they'll because I don't want to answer the question eight hundred thousand times a day. How do you spell this? I'm like, I don't. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Just write it down. I'm not interested in that. I'm not a spelling teacher. I want you to put your thoughts on this paper. Get them out fast. Boom. But like, if like, there's no worse place to be than in like a room full of only teachers, right? It's like the most pedantic place in the universe, <laughs> right? Like, full of like, you just like correct each other's grammar and be like well that's not spelled right like i don't care that's not the point here we're focusing on the wrong thing stop it (laughs) 
It's, right. it's very distressing. We, right. We just need to keep, keep moving. Yeah. Like, don't talk to your kids like this, please. That's not going to help them. <laughs> please tell me you're not doing that to children. Please don't do. Uh, but yeah. So hopefully I can survive PD day by doing yes. other tasks that will be useful to me. Best, best of luck. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Also, right, just another side tangent here. I don't know sure. what is happening this fall, right? But there are currently four crickets on the wall of my room right now. And I don't know why. <laughs> what? What? Our house has so many crickets. There's so many crickets, like, outside. They're everywhere. That's terrifying. Everywhere. I don't know why there are so many. Like, normally have some in the house, right? I don't know if it's because it's, like, way dry and they want something. But, like, they're all over the stinky place. And I don't know why there are currently four crickets just on my wall. This is, I just looked over and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I didn't know it was, apparently it's cricket season. October is apparently cricket season. If you didn't know, um, that's what. <laughs> hey, put this on my calendar. Maybe, yeah. maybe, uh, MDC will make a get you get a tag for that for next year. Yeah, maybe I can do something with this. This is very they, weird. I mean, are they are they big? Are they small? I mean, are they the what, medium what? size? Good. I need yeah, to thank dispose you. of them before they start making noises because that will kill me. Um, I don't need to do. <laughs> are you interested <laughs> in in harvesting them and turning this into a side hustle? Um, selling this into the exotics community? I don't um, think so. I don't know if exotics. They're a big market value for exotic, for crickets kind of thing. Man, I will tell you that during the, well, I, yes, I mean, crickets are high demand. I, a lot of people do cricket I mean, breeding. For, for um, fishing, I guess. No, no, for uh, for like tarantulas, uh, oh, yeah, sure. for geckos, for all sorts of critters will eat them. Um, and uh, you can be, I'm not going to say lucrative, but I will know, I do know that. Make tens of cents. Tens of cents. <laughs> especially tinkies. during the, um. Well, I know this is during the pandemic, like our local pet store just straight up stopped getting shipments for these. And they were the only place you could buy crickets in town. And we were having to go. I was going there every day just to see if they had some so I could buy a few to then take to my clients' houses because they were traveling. And so it was like, Every day before I went out to do visits, I had to take a swing by PetSmart to see if they had crickets because they had because <laughs> these my clients had um uh they had uh, bearded bearded dragons they had geckos and stuff that yeah. needed to to eat and so we had to we were like supplementing with uh, fake stuff and other things and it was uh it was it was very interesting I, was like, I never thought there'd be a day where we where supply chains impacted crickets who knew but okay like that's it's where we are right now. I, uh, yeah, that is very interesting. I'm taking a, a side note in my mind, right? This has brought about a memory. Um, w- 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 of the, do you remember on that shelf we had that like brass cricket box thing? Yes. Right. Yeah, it was it was above Mimi uh, the piano. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why are cricket boxes a thing? That's what I'm furiously Googling okay. right now. Like, what is the point of that? Or did they Wasn't actually it use it them? In the box? I don't know. Cricket keeping. That's a thing. Okay. I just found the word. <laughs> hey. But why? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh. I don't know. I know. I'm trying to find answers for this. Some of these pictures are the one that we had. Mm-hmm. Right, but I can't find. Why is there no Wikipedia page for this? Right, vintage cricket keeping is that a thing? What is happening? Mm-hmm. I want to know why that is uh, because I need a cricket box apparently uh, for all these crickets in my house. <laughs> oh, I thought it was for I thought it was for for luck, but the the Chinese art of cricket keeping was actually for fighting. They had fighting crickets. They had fighting cr- Yes, 12th century cricket fighting also started at what? 
What does a cricket fight look like? I don't don't Google that. You'll get on some list. Don't do it. I don't. What a lethal sport. What on earth is this? I don't. (laughs) Okay. This is very confusing. And I need more. I need more information on this and why does it exist? But if I just Google cricket keeping and then I can't spell keeping. Well, this, the one article Wikipedia does not seem to have is anything (laughs) related to crickets keeping uh, and boxes. Right? Yeah. Somehow this has been wiped from the internet and I think I think we're on to something here. On to something. Oh, oh. There's a crickets as pets Wikipedia page. <clears throat> Kept for their song. And then cricket fights. Okay, that has a page. Cricket fighting. Hobby and gambling activity involves the fighting of male crickets. Cricket fighting rarely causes injuries to animals. It is a popular pastime in China. It dates back more than a thousand years to the Tang Dynasty. However, the sport is losing popularity in China. Yeah. Gee, I wonder why. Well, I mean, like, I don't know. I I want. <laughs> I mean, okay. I want to see a it's... video. I mean, I kind of want to see a video, but I don't want to see a video. I don't, oh, they're arranged. Crickets are arranged according to weight class. What is There's this? A weight class? <laughs> yes, I'm looking. I'm say so. Wikipedia does have a cricket fighting web yeah, that's, page. I just found it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, arranged. Hey, apparently, cricket season begins in summer, and the champions championships take place after the autumn equinox. <gasps> hey, that's right now. That's when the crickets are getting big. Oh, right? hey, Feisty, uh, I guess. Uh, I'm in my house <clears throat> looking for something. Fight and anger. Cricket fights are arranged. For Fight and anger. I love yeah, that's a that's an odd. I love Somebody that. needs to fix this. I love, what a wonderful episode. Fight. <laughs> oh my Real. goodness. Okay, uh, I'm going to post the. Uh, see if I can do this. The Chinese cricket fighting world championships from the eight years ago. Oh, wow. The loser is the cricket that first begins avoiding contact, runs away from battle, stops chirping, or is thrown from the fighting container. So if you flee, you you run away, you disengage. You disengage, you become the loser. There is a tournament. Wow. In October, so it's cricket fighting season. These crickets here are much scarier than the Very ones intense. that are in my house yes. right these uh these crickets don't look like the just big black ones that i have here no right. <clears throat> yeah these are all oh, these are all sorts of oh these are wild this okay. is so strange <laughs> i who what what is this i don't <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. no there's a video that i sent you this guy's been doing this for like breeding these crickets for like 30 years so that's a thing. Hmm. Uh, yeah. There we go. So what I need to do is go scour the internet for uh, one of these little brass cricket cage things uh, and just put it on the table and don't tell Susan about it. That's what I'm really going to need to do. Surprise her with a uh, new pet cricket. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's yeah and, and you know and just and really for the longest time just really uh, what are you talking about no it's always it's always been there it's always yeah been yeah there. yeah these crickets are terrifying these, no, these are ones. not normal crickets they're like scary apparently keeping them as pets in Japan also a thing I bet there are some like stylistic differences between Japanese and Chinese cricket boxes Oh, I thought you were going to say stylistic between their fighting styles. <laughs> uh, maybe too, right? Well, it doesn't say here that the Japanese have any part of cricket fighting, right? <laughs> <clears throat> in uh, in Japan, the cricket is a symbol of autumn in haiku poetry. This makes sense because it is autumn and there's always crickets in my house. Why? <laughs> okay. Well, now we just have to wait for your haiku poetry. And I think... Um, okay, 
cricket haiku coming next week. Hey, right. we'll get on that. Um, we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> well. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, uh, I think, I think that's a, that's a, you know, we'll have to just. That's man. There's a lot to look forward to then. I think it's a lot. There's a lot of confusion happening. I I don't I, really I, want to watch this YouTube video because I don't know what that's going to do to my watches. I think that's exactly be. why you need to watch it. And I look forward to my, your <laughs> to your full report on um on the stylistic differences between the boxes, and a haiku, and um and a uh, yeah, and who your money is on this year. All right, not yeah, done. okay. So more more in depth cricket analysis <laughs> coming coming soon insect analysis sorry not the sport i don't i know nothing about both of these things actually so this will be <laughs> let me explain. that and that my that is what we excel at <laughs> it's bringing you the, the the latest and best reporting completely from a point of <laughs> yeah of utter ignorance of utter right there we go utter ignorance exactly so there you go all right it's amazing all right cricket haiku next week haiku and uh stylistic report look forward to it okay got it (laughs) love you love you too bye bye